What's going on, everybody? Tribbles in here. Welcome back to the Bourbon Ranch. Today, we have several bottles of bourbons, whiskeys, ryes, all sorts of crazy stuff that are upcoming for 2023. This list is insane. Now, I made a video a while back for upcoming 2023 releases, and there's just so many coming out. Uh, all of these are relatively new announcements, TTB photos, uh, actual bottlings already. We already see them in bottles. It's just absolutely crazy. 2023 is, you know, might be a hitter year for whiskey. That being said, here are another seven upcoming whiskeys that I'm excited for, or maybe we can just laugh at. Maybe we'll never get them or whatever. So let's just get right into the list. We have a lot of them to cover. We'll discuss what we think about it, how hard it will be to get, etc. The first one up is uh, we'll start with one that I probably won't have the possibility of getting. Old Forester, the President's Choice for 2023. Here we go. We have the little announcement for it. 56.05. It has been aged for eight summers in the barrel. Eight-year-old, the President's Choice. Now, the thing with this is, for one, if you're an Old Forester fan, these are supposedly really freaking good. They're just, you know, they just find some awesome barrel, bam. I don't know if they sell them outside of the gift shop, but I do know that they do offer stuff like this in the gift shop. I don't think they announce, hey, on Tuesday, we're going to be dropping the president's choice because it would be mass hysteria. But that being said, don't get your hopes up if you're like, oh, hey, the President's Choice 2023 is dropping. I can just go swing by Old Forester and get one. Probably won't happen. Maybe if you're lucky, just give it a shot. But let's just be honest for a minute. There's people who live there who probably go to Old Forester's gift shop every friggin' day. Like, Bill, go home with your family, dude. Dang. You know, doing a distillery only release is cool until I'm an outsider looking in and being like, I can't go check, you know, every day, you know, every weekend, every month. I can go once a year, and if I come up short, come back next year, nerd. All right, let's move on. You know, there's always, the grass is always greener on the other side. Let's move to the next bottle, which I, I, we're gonna have to break this down. This is two photos, okay? I kind of took the back of the, uh, of the bottle, and the name of the bottle on this. Four grain mash bill, double single barrel. What is, what, what is even that? This is a release from Lux Row. It is a four grain, really cool. Uh, I think what they mean by this is that they are taking a you know a rye mash bill bourbon in a wheat mash bill bourbon and they put them in a barrel and then that one singular barrel is then so like you're making a four grain in one big barrel and then bottle like, i don't know <laughs> i really don't know what they mean by that but I, they're trying i get it that's that's transparency but then it's also so freaking confusing. Like, maybe we need to, uh, I don't know. What do you guys think? I just, it's either A, let's just come up with the most ridiculous sounding title, this double single barrel special reserve the third and make it sound fancy, or this is just a confusing or weird title that we can poke fun at. It still sounds good. Don't get me wrong. I I I want to try this. This sounds good. I just think that I personally think it's weird. You know, let's figure out. Let's come together. Leave a comment. What you think that is? Double single barrel. It's just it just sounds weird. Rolling off the tongue. That's it. Hopefully it's good. I'm excited nonetheless. All right. <laughs> let's move on to another pretty unique bottle that I'm really excited for. Ross and Squib, AKA people, you know, back in my day, MGP, Ross and Squib Distillery Remus Straight Bourbon Whiskey, highest rye. 
51% corn, 39% rye, and what is that? Malted rye, 10%. So we're looking at 49% of some sort of rye component, 51% corn. What the heck does that taste like? I don't know, but I wanna drink it. Aged six years, six year Ross and Squib doing something weird. You know, in an age of everyone trying to stand out, people trying to do unique things, you know, we see so many people finishing whiskey and this and that and the other, and there's some on this list that is like that, and we'll get to them. Uh, but this is a cool, unique way, I think, I, I don't recognize any other bottle, at least bourbons that are on the market that are doing weird stuff like this. So I think that's pretty cool. I love Remus. I love Ross and Squibb. I love MGP. Just good stuff. I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. All right, let's move on to the next bottle. This is gonna go to one I'm excited for. Yellowstone, the 2023 limited release this year is going to be Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey finished in Tokai. Tokai, I had no idea what the heck Tokai was until I tried another uh, bottle that was finished in Tokai, the Penelope Tokai finished. Really freaking good, really good. It reminded me of a Midwinter Night's Dram, which makes total sense because Tokai is a Hungarian dessert wine, so think high proof dessert fortified uh, wine like port which midwinters is finished in port and that's what it tastes like just very desserty dark grapey jammy i'm excited i love bourbons that are finished in port um i haven't really tried that many that are finished in tokai i think that's relatively new uh, you know, people are trying these all sorts of crazy wine finishes and certain ones stick or certain ones get popular. And then I feel like everyone just starts doing that. Like, oh man, people really love the port. Bam, you got 10 new people doing port. Tokai, I think did pretty good, at least in my mind. I don't think uh, maybe Penelope didn't have the widest reach with that bottle, but it was phenomenal so i think people are realizing like these certain casks really work well uh, blending with whiskey um i'm excited for this one you know yellowstone's hit or miss to me in terms of the hype behind these limited releases i've seen some people talk about how like it's overhyped and the people are charging 300 dollars for a bottle and they don't you know it's just crazy and then around here, wow, I can't just go to the store and buy one. I see a lot of them in the raffles. People pass them by, they don't buy them, and you have a higher chance of getting them. So this is a bigger chance of me getting this. I hope I get one because this sounds really good. If you guys are into the Yellowstone limited releases, I think the Tokai might be pretty fun to try. So let's try and get one of those. All right, let's move on to the final three bottles on this list. I saved, to me, my most exciting three or the most interesting, crazy, whatever three for last. So hit the like button for last in this long and let's get right into it. The next one on the list, Dickel, Urban Whiskey, aged 18 years. Okay, Dickel, let's just flex on some people. Yeah, we, we're Dickel, you talk crap? 18 year old whiskey. Here's the thing about this. I don't know what this bottle right here is going to taste like. I don't know, this is new. What I can tell you is I can give you insight on something personally that I have tried that sh maybe will be similar to this. I have a 15 year old Dickel store pick. The 52% or whatever ones that they were doing, the 15 year old. The neck tag on the bottle, though, suggests to me that that bottle is actually 17 years old. That bottle is phenomenal. It is so good. You know, that was one of the bottles where they, they put out this 15-year-old Dickel, and when they did that, I think a lot of people uh, prior to that were coming off the heels of that, that pretty terrible bottled and bond that they released, not gonna lie. You know, the, the Flintstone vitamin, everyone hated on it. It was coming off the heels of that, 
and I think that just carried over the bad rap. That bottle, you know, I would send a sample of that to anyone and be like, you try this and you tell me what you think. And I bet you would change majority of people's mind. Not everyone. Some people are weird. What I don't know is the price. I don't really have the price on any of these, so sorry. Um, but I can tell you the Dickle 15 I bought was $60 for 15 year old nickel. The 15 was 60, what would this be in their eyes? You know, 100, $120. In today's market, they probably won't do that, but who knows? Dickel is like the budget kings. They're putting out age stuff at really good prices. So hopefully this one matches that. And I hope it's as good as I'm expecting it to be just based on the one that I have. So really excited for this. Very interesting. All right, moving on to a actual bottle. This is not a label. This is a bottle. It kind of snuck under my radar and all of a sudden I started seeing people post photos of the bottle. So it's out there and we'll call this a bonus one. This isn't upcoming, this is now. People are getting it now. Um, and we'll do this one before what I would say is the most crazy, in my mind, release that's coming. We saved the best for last, okay? Let's get into this one first. Jack Daniels Single Barrel Barrel Proof Rye. This isn't the 2020 limited release. Where the heck did that come from? I didn't know that was coming. People just started dropping photos. I've seen hazmats. I've just... It's been crazy. So I am so stoked for this because if it's anything like that 2020 special release, these are gonna be great. Now, when these popped up, I've had people tell me that this is going to be just the standard offering. This is just gonna be there with the barrel proof bourbon. I don't know, that would be cool. It doesn't, you know, say limited release on there. You know what I'm saying? So maybe? Maybe that this is interesting. This is really cool. Uh, Jack Daniels this year has been in so many of my videos. They're dropping so much stuff. Like they are doing it right when it comes to limited releases, standard releases, bull crap releases. You know, they're, they're putting out Jack and Coke in a can. They're putting out the bonded, the triple mash that are standard everyday offerings. They're doing the 10 and 12 year that you're gonna have to sell your soul for or just get lucky. Some of you've gotten lucky, but come on. They're just killing it. And then this, where did this come from? Jack, dang, enough of that. We have one more and you know, I was thinking about maybe starting with this one, but I'm gonna end it because I'm, I got a lot to say about this one. Holy crap, let's just get right into it. Maker's Mark, a special blend of aged barrels, 70% whiskey aged 11 years, 30% whiskey aged 12 years. This is called the Cellar Aged. It's 90.6 proof. Do you hear what I said? 11 year and 12 year old Maker's Mark. This is freaking unprecedented. This is just, if this comes to fruition, because, you know, I've, I've never really talked about this, but these TTV photos and all this stuff, if there's not an actual freaking bottle of whiskey, in theory, it doesn't have to be anything. We can submit the photo and they say, yeah, sure, do it, but we don't have to do it. We can just get ready to do it. So just take that, take everything with a grain of salt. For the most part, everything comes to fruition. So um, I'm hopeful. I'm really, really hopeful. I see no reason why they won't do this. And I think maybe that is why they won't do this is what the same reason why this is so unprecedented is because they've never done this. They've never put out an aged whiskey. They, they, they've had it. People have tried it in the past, but they don't bottle it, they don't sell it, they don't do that. And their excuse is always something like, oh, it, I've tried it and it doesn't taste good. Why don't you put out what the market wants? And I think maybe this is it. Maybe they're dipping their toes. Maybe they're saying like, you know what? It's time. 
We have to grow with the market. People want a 12 year old makers. Hopefully this isn't ridiculous to come by and why the only reason I say that is because this is un this is the first time they're doing it. This is this is it. This is like breaking the ground. People are going to be hyped. I'm hyped. Everyone see has been seeing this and is freaking hyped. Might make it really hard to get. Do they have the power and the capacity to put stuff like this out consistently in to a lot of people? Absolutely, freaking lutely they do. Will they do that? Maybe not. Maybe they'll do a run of it and be like, there you go. You tried it. Sorry. So um, the whole seller age two, uh, I think I there's not a lot of info on this, but the only thing I can think of with that, they have the seller at Maker's Mark and it's where the private barrel stuff is. That's where you go in there and you blend. So when you, if you do the tour there, they take you in the cellar. That's the only thing I'm thinking is they are aging 12 year old makers in that cellar. The only reason I bring that up is I don't know really how cellar aging affects things in terms of you take a regular makers, it's aged for six to eight years in a Rick house versus 12 years. I don't know if they're aging it for 12 years in that cellar or if they're taking eight year old or six year old makers and then aging it for another four or five years in the cellar. You know what I'm saying? I feel like the whole cellar aged thing is gonna come into play somehow a little bit more or make things different than what we're thinking still really exciting maybe that's why they did the lower proof i i really don't know i think the seller age thing is really where this is you know the kind of the catch to this so um still i am so freaking excited just like everyone else i'm the makers fanboy though I gotta have it. All right, there we have it, guys. Those are some upcoming bottles for 2023 that I'm excited for, that I'm gonna be looking out for, hopefully getting. Hopefully you guys will go out there, hunt them down. You get to try some of these, all of them. Probably not. If you get all of them, good job, you won. You win the prize of having all the bottles. Hope you liked the video. If you like this style of video, leave a like. Go comment down below what you think of this list. Which bottles are you the most excited for? And until next time, I'm Trev Wilson. I will see you in the next video.